I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, um, but my mother grew up in Maine. She uh, was living in Bangor and was commuting to the University of Maine to go to school. And she experienced a great deal of anti-Semitism. She finally went to her father and said, I'd like to transfer to NYU and finish up there. And she did. Um, and she told me when I was little, and we were talking about how she came to New York, that she had never realized there were so many Jews in the world. And that although I grew up in a community that was very mixed in Brooklyn, and felt no anti-Semitism and felt that we all mingled together and, and learned together and grew up together. One of the things I've learned over the years is that these things can be very fragile and that we have to guard them very carefully. Ms. Tobias attended James Madison High School, a Brooklyn public school that boasts such other notable graduates as Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Bernie Sanders. She then went to Brooklyn College and Columbia University, where she earned a master's degree in English and American literature. In 1977, married with children, Orich received her Juris Doctor degree from the University of Pennsylvania Law School. She began her law career at the age of 40 with the Division of Law. I found myself moving from section to section and learning. I loved learning new law. Um, I loved learning what the public issues were. I ended up reviewing appellate briefs at one point and finally became director of the Division of Law, which is the civil division of the Attorney General's office. In 1989, Poritz was asked to serve as general counsel for Governor Kane during his last year in office. He is, in my view, what we need in people who uh, work for government, who care about government, who run for office in government. He cared about public policy. He cared about people who were less fortunate than he. And so that was turned out to be a remarkable year for me, to be able to learn from someone like that and uh, to understand what, um, what it really meant to serve people in a high political position. In 1994, Poritz became New Jersey's first female attorney general for Governor Christine Todd Whitman, and in 1996, she was nominated by Whitman to serve as Chief Justice of the New Jersey Supreme Court. Chief Justice Poritz was the first woman's Chief Justice, so she was a trailblazer. She was very much aware of having women in leadership roles. She appointed women to leadership positions, myself included, and that continued during her whole tenure, and I think even today. Justice Poritz was a woman ahead of her time by prodding, helping New Jersey to, be, to really be a leader in the establishment of drug courts, which enable people who are brought in on various kinds of drug charges that if they go into treatment successfully, that they can avoid criminal uh, prosecution. So kind of shows that her experience on the judicial side of things helped us change the landscape for the people who are on the other side of the bar. I knew her before I was appointed to the court in 1999, and I knew that she was a beloved figure in the Attorney General's office. And my impression of her as Chief Justice was completely aligned with that, that view of her. She was warm, welcoming, funny, just wonderful to be around. It was said that the members of the Wolins Court could finish each other's sentences, and it was correct. And so people were expecting that the Chief Justice Porras may have some difficulty adjusting, but she did not. She fit in immediately very well and within a very short period of time, she too was finishing each other's sentences. When she asked a question, unlike some people who want to answer the question, she wanted to hear from as many people that she could. And if she had a particular position, it was never shared with us in the beginning. Her selection of cases to author herself was uh, very thoughtful and, and wise. Some were cases 
in which she obviously felt strongly about the results. Some were cases in which she felt that the cases were controversial, and so she wanted to bear the burden of authoring a decision that might be criticized by the public. She is certainly remembered for um, Dale versus the Boy Scouts, um, in which uh, the court held that uh, the Boy Scouts could not uh, preclude a homosexual person from becoming a Boy Scout leader. She wrote, the sad truth is that excluded groups and individuals have been prevented from full participation in the social, economic, and political life of our country. The human price of this bigotry has been enormous. At a most fundamental level, adherence to the principle of equality demands that our legal system protect the victims of invidious discrimination. I thought that was a beautiful opinion. Regrettably, it was reversed by the United States Supreme Court. Then in Lewis versus Harris, she wrote the dissent, dissenting opinion, um, which eventually became the law of the land in Obergefell. In our case, the majority of the court said, um, it doesn't matter what you call the union between two men or two women, those unions. Um, what matters is that they get equal benefits. And the dissent agreed, but it also said what you call something matters, that language is important. Uh, it's symbolic, it carries meaning, and it changes lives. Ultimately, when the United States Supreme Court rulings made it clear that um, federal benefits had to go to people who were married. The word married became important, and immediately in New Jersey, um, the court acted. In the sixth Abbott v. Burke school funding decision, Poritz, writing for the majority, reaffirmed the court's commitment to quality preschool education for the state's poorest districts and ordered the Department of Education to follow through on their promise to staff preschools with certified teachers. People tend to say, we haven't accomplished enough. It hasn't been worth all of this. We've poured money into it and look what we have. I think that's wrong, seriously wrong. Um, and I, it, it appalls me when I see that. It was clear that those programs were real, not just largely successful, enormously successful. She is like, the drum majorette for equal justice. And that's because she understands that there is no such thing as justice for some of the people in society. And that a justice system, which operates in a way that rich people get different outcomes from poor people, is not a justice system at all. And that is really, I think, what has motivated her deep commitment to legal services. Every year as we get just even close to budget time, I know I'm going to hear from Justice Poritz, and I know it's going to be about money for legal services and why that organization is so important to so many people in our state, whether we're talking about lack of housing, health care, women's access to defense against domestic violence. Her commitment, her tenacity, her belief in the program, through all the years that she was on the board, and particularly when she was chair of the board, made all the difference in terms of legal services funding uh, and ultimately preserving and expanding legal assistance for low-income people in New Jersey. When I became Chief Justice, I said to my assistant, do we have any of Chief Justice Wilentz's files on legal services? We pulled from the file cabinet a number of files, including speeches he'd made for legal services and about legal services, interactions and meetings, public statements. What I learned from Chief Justice Wilentz after he died was the love he had for the organization, the concern he had about its viability, about um, the resistance to funding, about the important work 
that legal services was doing. In this society where you have to navigate through so many um, contexts in which the law makes the difference and where you're trying to help people who have no experience, no background, no way of navigating through that, you, you're in a position to give them their lives back.